Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 17. In this tutorial we are going to implement a depth buffer. If you are not familiar at all at what a Z buffer or a depth buffer is, I recommend checking out this video. I'll have a link to it uh, by Udacity called How the Z Buffer Works. It's just a little two minute video that shows how the Z buffer works. So in our code, first let's look at why we want to implement uh, this Z buffer. So let's go to the graphics CPP and I'm going to change our previous code to just render a red triangle. So I'm changing all the red values in the RGB to be red. Okay, so this is what we currently get. Now let's say that inside of this red triangle we want to draw a green triangle. So there's a few steps we'd have to do to do this. We'd have to go to our graphics header. We'd have to add another buffer for our second triangle. We'll just call it vertex buffer two. Back in our graphics CPP, in our initialize scene, we will have to initialize the vertex data and the vertices for this new triangle. So I'm just going to copy what we had and modify this for our second triangle. So I want this to be smaller than the red triangle, so I'm just going to half all of the vertices from zero. Alright, and I want to change them from red to green, so I'm going to put in one for the green value, zero for the red value. I'm going to change it from V to V2. I don't need to redeclare the vertex buffer description because it was declared right up here for our first uh, vertex buffer. And I'm going to change it from array size to array size of V2. They're the same size, so I guess this part doesn't matter. And I'm going to change it from pointing to system memory for V to point to V2. And remove the declaration for the sub-resource data since we're just reusing that. And change it to vertex buffer 2 when we initialize it. So now we should be initializing a red and a green triangle. If we want to draw this green triangle, let's go to our render frame. And what we are going to do is just copy the IA set vertex buffer and the draw calls. And this has the same stride and offset, so we can just reuse that. We are going to pass in vertex buffer 2 for our vertex buffer, and then draw it. Now if we go to test this, Oh, looks like I redefined HR. Let's take that out. Now let's go to test this again. Okay, and we get a red triangle and we get our green triangle inside of it. So that's all great. However, the only reason that we're able to see the green triangle in this case is because of the order that we drew these in. For example, let's say that I move, say, this is the red try and that's the green try. So let's say that I draw the green triangle first, and then I draw the red triangle. Well, we only see the red triangle, so what's happening is we're, draw we're drawing that green triangle, and then we are drawing the red triangle, and it is covering over the green triangle because we don't have any way to store the depth for this. So what we need to do is create something called a depth stencil view. Let's go into the graphics header. All right, and we are going to create a depth stencil view as well as a buffer. In our initialize directx, we will set these up. So let's go into our initialize directx function. And before we set these up, we are also going to change in where we are creating the viewport. We need to set the min and max depth values. So we are going to use between 0 and 1. So if something is at 0, it will be as close as to the camera as possible. And if something is 1, then it will be as far as possible. For our OM set render targets, one of the arguments is actually a pointer to the depth sensor view to start with. So what we can do is before we call om set render targets, 
we can set up our depth stencil view and then pass it in here. So the way that we are going to do this is we create a similar to how we made our back buffer. It's a 2D texture. Our, our depth stencil is also a 2D texture. The width is just going to be the same as our, our rendering areas width. the height, same MIP levels and array size. Don't need to worry about that right now. MIP levels just has to be one essentially and array size. We just have one of these format is if we take a look at this the format we're using is a 32-bit z buffer format so it has 24 bits for depth and 8 bits for a stencil we are not currently going to be using the stencil part yet so all we need to know is we have 24 bits for depth next we're just setting the sample description count and quality the usage default for the bind flags we're using a depth stencil and for the CPU access flags, and miss flag zero, we don't need it to access the CPU or anything. So next we need to create the texture. So we call create texture 2D from our device. We pass in the address of this description we just made. Second argument is our initial data, which we don't have any. So we pass in null and that would be passed in as a sub resource data the same way how we do with our vertices. And the last is where we want to store this uh, buffer. So we are calling get address of on the depth stencil buffer variable that we had created. Next we need to create the depth stencil view from that buffer. So we will call get on the buffer. We can just leave the second argument as null and then call get address of on the depth sensor view to populate it. Now in our OM set render targets, we're going to change this to the depth stencil view dot get. Now let's go down to our render frame. In our render frame, after we clear the window, we are going to clear the depth stencil view. So essentially when we're drawing, you know, we store the closest depth of that pixel. And before we render a new frame, we have to clear out the whole uh, depth buffer. So we're calling depth sensor view get. The, the second flags are if you want to just clear the depth or clear the depth and the stencil. We're clearing both. The next flag is the value to set the depth to. In this case, we set it to one since that is the max depth. The very last value is the value to initialize the stencil to, which we are not currently using, and we're just initializing it to zero. So after we've made these changes and we go to test it, you might notice something strange. So we, we're drawing the green triangle first, and then we draw the red triangle, and for some reason we can still see the green triangle. Now what's happening is these both have the same depth, and by default, our depth stencil state will say, okay, only, um, only replace the pixel if the new depth is less than the previous one. And they have the same depth. So we've drawn this green triangle, and then we go to draw the red triangle, and when it gets to this point, you know, it says, oh, well, it has the same depth, so don't even override it. What we would want to expect in this case, since we haven't assigned a depth, is we would want to see the red triangle. So what we have to do to fix this is we have to add in a depth stencil state. So let's go back to our graphics header. And here we are going to add the depth stencil state. Let's go back to our initialize direct X and set this state up. So just after we have set our render targets, what we are going to do is create depth stencil state. The first thing we will do is create our depth stencil description and zero it out. We will enable our depth. For the depth right mask, we are going to set it to right mask all. Now, if it's all, the stencil is turned on. If it's zero, the stencil is turned off. And we just want to go ahead and turn it on, so we're using all. For the depth function, this is uh, how we will decide if to replace that pixel or not. So 
if the depth is less or equal, then we will replace it. Next, we have to create the depth stencil state. So we just pass in the address to the description, and then we pass in get address of for the depth stencil state to populate it. Oh, let's fix that. So back in our render frame function, we need to actually set our depth stencil state before we render. So what I'll do is just after setting the rasterizer state, we'll call om set depth stencil state. For the second argument for the stencil reference, we're just going to pass in zero. So if we test this now, let's see what we get. Okay, so we just get a red triangle. So just to clear something up, let's go back into our depth stencil state. And down here, we had set the comparison to be less or equal. Now, what we had before we had made this, I'm assuming it defaults to less. Because if we test this out, you see that with less we still see it because it's only replacing it if the new depth is less than the previous depth. However, I want to use less or equal to use the last thing I drew if they have the same depth. Now, what we need to figure out is how are we going to assign uh, depth to our vertices. Well, let's look at where we are initializing these vertices. So currently we have an x value, which is from left to right, and we have a y value, which is from bottom to top. What we need to add is a z value, which for 2D, this will be the, um, the depth. Let's go into our vertex struct so that we can add a new value. We call it float z. And when we initialize our pose, we will pass in z and change it to an xm float 3 for our pose. Now let's go into our graphic CPP and change this to take in a z value. So our red triangle, our red triangle is going to be further away. So we're going to give this the furthest possible z value of 1. We will do that for all of the vertices. Now our green triangle, we want it to be closer. We want it to be as close as possible so it always gets drawn over the red triangle. So we will give it a z value of 0 because 0 is as close as we can get. Now the last thing we have to do here is update our input assembly. So let's go to where we are initializing our shaders. And for this, because currently we are passing in two floats for our position, we're passing in the R32 float and the G32 float. If we want to add another float, we will change this to B32. We won't have to update the uh, next element's alignment because we are using this macro. Next, we have to update our vertex shader. Since we just update the input layout, we need to go and update the vertex shader. Inside of our vertex shader, we were expecting a float 2 before. Let's change that to a float 3. And we're going to take out where we were assigning the z value to 0 and not assign it, since we will be pulling that in from our end pose variable. So now, if we go to test this, we should see our green triangle. All right, there we go, we see it. Now what's important about this, and the whole reason that we did this, in case it wasn't clear, is if we go back to our render frame, you see we're drawing the green triangle first and then the red triangle. So now that we have this uh, depth assigned to each vertex, it doesn't matter which order we draw it in. So we won't have to be, you know, going and making sure that everything we draw is from uh, the back to the front, essentially. We can just draw it in whatever order we want, and if the... Uh, pixel is closer to the camera, then it will just overwrite the previous pixel. Alright everybody, so that is all that we are going to cover in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are probably going to look at um, how to create a font file for DirectX Toolkit. And depending on how short that tutorial is, we might also get into how to render a 2D font with this new font file we created.